One of the hottest topics coming out of Lansing right now, proposed changes to Michigan's no-fault auto insurance. Now, bills have passed the Senate that would change the catastrophic claims association and set limits on what medical providers could charge for certain procedures. That bill has stalled in the House where representatives said they want more guarantees that rates would drop as a result of this. That's right. The House bill would set a cap for medical payments at 150% of the Medicare reimbursement rate. Supporters trumpet the reforms as a way to lower auto insurance costs, but opponents say this would diminish care for people who are severely injured in car accidents. Hey, joining us today, Oakland County Executive L. Brooks Patterson, who's been an outspoken opponent of these reforms, which puts you, Mr. Patterson, a little bit at odds with other Republicans in the state government. And not really, we're, other than the leadership, I agree with that. But most of the uh, you know, rank and file Republican rep are with us. The Democrats took a caucus position, they're 100% with us, and they've stepped back and analyzed what this is really all about. Back in 73, Michigan led the way and created this fund, this catastrophic claims fund, which is now sits at around $20 billion. That's the problem nobody's talking about. The legislature wants to get its hands on that $20 billion so they can do all kinds of things, fix roads and so forth. And the public said, no, that fund was created to protect the, the most vulnerable in our society. And the insurance companies, which are spending millions to make this change, stand to gain billions. It's a train robbery, clear and simple. This is what it's all about. The insurance companies want that money. So it's a fight between uh, the innocent victim of an auto accident, whose costs are catastrophic and will be needing care for the rest of the life, and an insurance company that seized 20 billion, and they want, and they think it's their money. It's not their money. It was money that was tacked on to your insurance policy since uh, 1973. About right now, it's 150 dollars. And then people say, "Well, I want to lower your insurance rates. Your insurance rates are 5,000 dollars. You really want to throw out this whole program just to get 150 off your bill? Then it comes down to 48.50. What this?" Catastrophic claims fund is not the one that's jacking up the bill. It's all sorts of inclusions in insurance, and so the insurance companies are pushing this so they can get their hands on that money, and uh, it, it, it's a cry and shame. I'm what? not covered because I had an accident, as you know. Right. I, I'm not covered by that fund. I, I, the reimbursement I get for my medical care comes under workers' compensation because I was on duty at the time, same for my driver. Mm -hmm. What is the number one risk, do you think, that comes with changing the system? I understand all the players here and everything you said, but what is your biggest concern? Well, the biggest concern is that the people who have been catastrophically injured are going to run out of care. They're going to eventually strip themselves of all their personal wealth to maintain the kind of care they need, which is basically around-the-clock care, and sometimes two nurses. And when they run out of that, they're going to be put into the Medicaid system. The Medicaid system, as we all know, has its problems, and they're going to be put on, into, a, into a hospital someplace and basically warehoused. So it's the quality of care that is at risk here when, when politicians in Lansing start seeing $20 billion and want to take it for their own nefarious purposes. It's really about that poor guy, woman or gal, whoever it might, might be uh, in, 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 a, uh, uh, in a hospital bed for the rest of their life and making sure they have the care to have some a modicum of a quality of life in the remaining years. All right, Mr. Patterson, uh, proponents of reform point to the astronomical costs that we all do of the auto insurance in Michigan, especially in Detroit, the highest in the country. In a guest column in the Detroit Free Press yesterday, Senator Virgil Smith wrote, so we are now left with a system that is one of the most expensive in the nation, has no regulations over rates, has medical costs that are out of hand, and gives consumers no way to fight excessive rates. What is the solution? to our serious insurance crisis. Either we go back to restricting rates in urban areas and raising rates elsewhere, which will never happen, or we attempt to put a reasonable cap on medical costs. What's the harm in capping medical payment costs, he asks. Okay, the cap, the risk is, of course, the cap will be exceeded, and then what happens? They, they, they offered the, the voters back in 1990, first of all, I want the, the voters who are watching this, there's nothing on the ballot now. What's coming up tomorrow is property tax, okay? There's nothing on the ballot about no-fault reform. But when we get to that point, or when the legislation gets to the point where it may be signed, uh, what we're talking about is the, is the cap that will be exceeded. Uh, they, they, back in 1992, mm -hmm. the voters were offered a chance to wipe out, Medi uh, wipe out the auto no-fault insurance program. Just wipe it up. 77% right. said, leave it alone. So the legislature came back in 94 and said, okay, we don't want to wipe it up. We'll cap it at a million dollars, which is a cruel joke. My driver uh, is up over four and a half, going on five million right now. So the cap it at a million is, is, is illusory. It, it's, a, it's just a false promise. You're going to blow through that easily in your first year if you're a catastrophically injured individual. So and the voters saw through that back in 94 and said, no, leave it alone. Here we are. Fast forward to 2015. We're not going to come to you, the voters. We don't trust you, so we're going to do it legislatively. You don't and think it'll pass, though? 
Do I think it's a compact? No, I don't. No. I think people are going to rise up all around their state when they realize what's, what this is. It's a train robbery. And, and, and let me give you just one quick example uh, of, quickly, the miscon okay, of the misconduct of the legislature. They put in one sentence about uh, a, a financial uh, situation. What's the word? Uh, appropriation. As soon as you put the word appropriation in that legislation, it's moved over here and it can never be touched right. again by the voters who are any kind of a, uh, of a reform. L. Brooks Patterson, we thank you for your time as always today. Thank you.